Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Okay, hey, welcome back. We're live here in San Francisco, California, VMworld 2014. I'm John Furrier, my co-host for the segment, Stu Miniman, uh, and our next guest is Rex Walters, VP of Technology at Tin Tree. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Hey, we're all getting our second win. I got coffee. <laughs> um, day two, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Uh, Tin Tree, you guys have uh, been a big player in the ecosystem for a while. Um, great company, uh, great success story. Um, give, us a, give us a take on what's going on with storage and you guys here at VMworld, real quick. Well, the amazing thing is this has kind of become, I mean, I'm, in my opinion, this is the storage show now, right? If you go out on the floor, it's, it's just amazing the number of storage companies that are out there. And I think it's a part and parcel with cloud virtualization is what the consumer of storage, right? You're running your apps inside of a, of a cloud device of some sort. That's what's generating the data that's filling up your storage. Capacity. Dave Vellante, we started the Cube. It's our fifth year. I was uh, EMC World 2010 and um, I, Dave said, oh, it used to be called storage, now it's the hottest thing. Back then we're like, oh, it's going to be really hot with the cloud, storage being kind of boring. But now, since then, it's just the gift that keeps giving. You know, the innovation around storage, it's the engine around it because the confluence of the different trends, big data, mm -hmm. you got Internet of Things, cloud obviously changing architecturally, new, new with Flash. So it's been a massive upheaval and transformation, and it feels like it's just getting started. So give us your take on that. I mean, obviously, all those things kind of are happening, but where are we now, and how much more can this go? Is, is it a bubble, is it real, what's going on? No, it's definitely real, but I think the biggest thing is people are demanding the same level of agility with their applications, with their other infrastructure, with servers and with networking. They need it with their storage as well, and people want to consume it as simply as possible. They want, I need this much capacity, I want the infrastructure to just take care of it, make sure it's delivering the, the user experience and quality of service that, that I need. So, right. so customers are really are, are also kind of in mid-flight of this transformation too. So I got to ask you the customer question because they're the ones on the ground sure. have to deal with the you know VVOLs we're hearing about, things like that. We're hearing about LUNs again. And, mm -hmm. and automation clearly is the new thing. We had Carl Etcherbach saying they're in the data center automation business. But when you automate, you're basically doing a few things. You're abstracting complexity, yep. but you're also eliminating things. So, are people losing their jobs? Are they shifting? But this is what's happening. Things are going away. Functions are going away. What do you see there in the customer environment? What's being abstracted away? What are the key value things that are, that are positive for the, for the customers? Well, it's funny, you triggered a thought, which is I remember uh, you'd walk into an, uh, a data center, you'd walk into an IT shop and you would see the voice guys on one side of the room and the data set guys on the, or excuse me, the data guys on the other side of the room. And, they couldn't really communicate, right? You had the voice guys knew all this arcane knowledge about trunking protocols and arcane knowledge of Nortel switches and whatnot. And, you know, they, they're not around anymore. They've all become data guys. Data is everything. And um, I would actually, not to put too fine a point on it, I think that the storage guys are kind of the, the new voice guys, right? I think yes. everything is converging to this cloud model yeah. of being able to deploy your applications as quickly and agile as possible. At the same time, it's made it hard, right? It's not an easy thing to do when you've got more running on less. You've well, got to make so sure. Rex, I, if I wonder if I can ping a knife, that's a pretty bold statement because <laughs> you know, you know, when I talked to, you know, I spent most of my career networking. I actually sold Telcom gear back in the '90s, and he's offended we, by the voice comments. We, we do. <laughs> it's okay. No, no, no. You but we looked back, offended. and one of the things they said, "Oh, we can just, you know, put voice over, you know, IP, right. and that'll be real easy." And we look back and we say, "Wow, those voice guys were actually doing some things that we like lost." Yeah. Um, and for storage, you know, storage is a critical component. I mean, you know, you know, if I lose my data, I'm out of business. If yep. I have, you know, uh, you know, corruption, you know, I could really mess up some really bad things. So, you know, storage is a, you know, critical component. You know, what's that transition? You know, I mean, storage roles, you oh. know, change. We think, but it, does that role go away and merge into a it virtualization changes. or cloud? Admittedly, you know, what, what, what can you talk? Yeah, I, you know, I, 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 you know, obviously, it's a, an overstatement to say storage guys are no longer necessary. That's that's certainly not the case. Um, there was a George Gilder quote a million years ago about uh, things um, convergence not meaning meaning so much things combining into new. It's the new kind of utterly destroys the old. You know, open systems kind of replace mainframes, but we still have mainframes and we still have mainframe experience out there today. 
you know, automobiles, automobiles replaced horses. We still use mounted police. Well, no, know, still, no but the, the big points too, great point. I think that that's a good point. Voice never went away, but right. you know, PBX, remember they were around, digital, the whole unified communication. It just never happened, right? So like, the bets were wrong, but the functionality never went away, right? right. So I still, there's still this voicemail, there's still phones, and no, well, but no, now. No, no, but John, it was specifically the administrators of the voice stuff if we just eliminated that role, we lost something in our environment. Well, well don't you think it shifts those two? Like, so the guys that were doing the voice stuff to the point, right? Yeah. If they clung on and said, no, I'm going to stay here, I'm going to stay peaked on voice stuff, they're basically out of work. Yeah. Right? Uh, the, exactly. smart, the smart money exactly. said, hey, I need to get retrained. Yeah. John, John I'm, I'm with you a thousand percent. It's retraining, it's cross-training, it, it's getting people involved. I just, right, as, as we we're saying, we're not getting rid of the storage expertise. It is, you know, going to change the functionality. Hopefully, your storage guys aren't going to be, you know, creating and managing LUNs. Because exactly. we don't need to do that anymore. So it, it, it is a maturation and a change, but you know, some storage management is, is still going to need to be well, somewhere. It's where you're applying the knowledge, right? I mean, ultimately now, all, the, all infrastructure exists to support your applications. It's all about the apps. Your apps are seeing what they perceive as locally attached, direct attached storage. And that's where your different quality of service needs are, right? If you've got something that's doing nothing but sequential writes, you want to do something different for it than something that's got a very scattered, random, you know, read-write max. And I think the thing that's changed is everybody making making their policy decisions on a per VM, per virtual volume basis. Yeah, right, Rex, right, so that, that per VM, I think when Tintory first came out, it was uh, you know, VM aware storage. Exactly. Um, and what I kind of smile at this show is uh, virtual volumes is, or VVOLs yep. is, is, is coming out soon. And in many ways, the promise of it is what, what you guys are delivering. So what's, what's your take on you know, VVOLs and how does that affect Tintory and your mission? So we're, very bluntly, we think the first step to being able to deliver this cloud-like storage is having that granularity of per virtual volume being able to deliver a different user experience to be able to tune and optimize on a per virtual volume basis. What used to be virtual disks are now virtual volumes. Um, we're looking forward to it becoming much more real here. It's in beta currently and we're expecting to see it come out here shortly and when it does we can start comparing the degree, uh, we believe, you know, supporting very large numbers of virtual volumes is going to be incredibly important. Being able to truly deliver different tuning, different on a per virtual volume basis, I think is going to be difficult for some vendors to implement. So we're looking forward to being able to, uh, to, to compete on the implementation um, of the idea rather than just the idea, being the only guys out there. Now we also think that people, as they start developing this, are going to run into the things that we've had to do like how it's not just how much flash you give something, how much CPU, how much network, how much NVRAM is just as important. Right? Yeah. So Rex, uh, you know some of the other big themes. It's not just a VM world anymore when it comes to virtualization. It's a multi-hypervisor world. Exactly. Cloud, of course, is uh, you know impacting everything. So what's Tintry's role in a multi-hypervisor, multi-cloud world? We have to support. It. I mean, that's the nature of a cloud. Especially, you know, it's uh, the way companies grow as they acquire other companies, and sometimes it's not the same infrastructure. You're going to deal with something else. We think both supporting multiple hypervisors as well as being able to convert between multiple hypervisor formats is very important. Um, it is the applications that, that are driving the storage. It's focusing on how those applications are running. It's not about the infrastructure. Rex, I got to ask you about obviously the, um, the EVO rail announcement and how that ties in here because some of our analysis is clearly showing that this, it's actually pure validation for you guys, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, what, what that actually says is purpose-built or hyper-converged, essentially just a, a word for packaging, mm -hmm. is the way, and the software stack really becomes a critical aspect of it. So I want you to comment, do you believe that to be true? Do you see EVO Rails announcement validating the consumption from customers is not about either approach, appliances are okay, but really it's a software piece and the software stack in particular. Yep. Can you comment on that? Yeah, well I think, you know, ultimately, again, um, it's the apps, and apps are being developed in a different way. I mean, we're kind of seeing this primacy of DevOps as the, 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 the buzzword these days, and what it really means is we're kind of going back to the mainframe days of having the IS organization, where you're developing custom apps, and especially as we have these cloud, you know, cloud-like approaches to delivering your applications, where you've got multiple machines delivering the same service, I think that, that model of having new software stacks using things like object storage and using, there's lots of different. That changed the game on manageability, changing. scalability, right? Exactly. And so those guys doing that stuff could move into different functions. Not like there's not enough work to do. I mean, you mentioned the mainframes. We were commenting yesterday on the, our closing segment that 
we're seeing a, a rise of the developer in-house. Exactly. You really haven't seen that, even in client server, it was outsourced to the consultants, PC was shrink-wrapped, web was the web, but you, back in the mainframe days, you had guys in-house, right. called spaghetti code guys, exactly. like writing all that code. So now we're back there, right? So Amen. people are building more developers, more data science, more aspect. Does that change the management piece of it? Do you guys enable that? I guess that's my question. Do you guys enable Absolutely. that growth? Um, we believe we do, certainly. Um, and, and in fact, the, the nature of using some of these new storage protocols and using some of these new approaches requires you to re-architect and redesign your app. And I think all of it is a sign of the desire for more agility to be able to move things more quickly and not be kind of stonewalled by, oh, we carve off our lungs this way, this is the way it's always going to be. They need to be able to de deploy things in a new way. So, so Rex, you, you've been in the storage industry for, for quite a while. One of the interesting trends we've been watching is moving beyond the storage of data in our storage. It's things like data management, uh, of course, uh, just had data gravity come out with mm -hmm. what they're doing um, to kind of do some analytics on top of that. What, what's Tintree's view on that? Well, I mean, to be brutally honest, we try to stay away from what's inside, right? That we consider to be you know, the application's responsibility. We, we recognize we are an infrastructure product, so we try um, in our company not to know more about what's inside too much, other than, again, the multi-hypervisor thing. We need to know how to convert between them. But um, we do see the need for it. That makes total sense to us, because that ultimately becomes a type of application. People do want to know more about their data and we're seeing people deploying things inside of VMs to deliver storage services. Uh, to us, that's fascinating. That's something that we'd very much like to support. Yeah, I, so if we talk about you know, VMs, the workloads are changing a lot. Mm -hmm. there, are, there are plenty of applications that are still running on bare metal. Of course, Docker's been a big discussion right. at this point. Um, you know, is Tintory reliant on the VM? Can we do some bare metal? Can we do containers? How, how does that all yeah, fit right. into your environment? To us, our whole point, um, when we say we're VM aware storage, it's what we really mean is applications that are talking to software pretending it's hardware. How that's done, we really don't care. It's that abstraction model of having virtual disk, virtual volumes, virtual machines, whether it's running in a, a Docker container or whether it's running in a traditional VM. Yeah, so if Docker takes over the world, you guys aren't out of Absolutely. business. Absolutely, yeah. like 100%, <laughs> thank goodness. Chris, give us the update on the company, what's going on. Tintree, obviously venture-backed uh, from NEA. I mm -hmm. think Pete Sonsini's on the board. Yes. Friend of ours, we had him on theCUBE this morning. Um, also an investor in our new CrowdChat engagement container, being called the Docker of social media here at the show. Um, certainly a great investor. What's going on at the company for you guys? What, what's, what's the status on headcount, engineering? What are you guys doing? What's the key milestones? We're, we're growing very rapidly, um, which is a good thing. We've literally just moved. Um, this uh, you know, VM world is obviously a very big show for us. Never fails, everything happens at the same time. We literally just moved into a new facility about a couple times larger than where we were before. I believe, you know, what time is it? Last time I checked, I think we're about 280, 290 employees currently. And uh, fortunately, things are moving up into so the what's right. So the, what's the product engineering culture like at Tintree? Um, what do you guys really obsess about? We obsess about cloud. We really do, private cloud, the, the cloud approach to doing things, the new styles of developing apps for uh, object-based storage versus the traditional file NAS type approach. Um, we want to see where things are going, you know, to where the puck's going to be kind of a thing. Um, but to us, it's all about how people are deploying their applications. And big customer changes for you guys in terms of adoption, what are you guys seeing for big trending, mega trends that you're riding in terms of customer on the, on the customer front? That's the really fun thing about what we're doing right now, is we're seeing this quick uptake when somebody actually deploys one of our systems and sees how it can work. They're scaling very rapidly in their own environment. So we have some very large deployments now where people have uh, you know, started with initial very focused use case and then yeah. they've gone and said, you know, this is so easy to scale. I'm not having to deal with my infrastructure. It's yeah. just taking very horizontally scalable. Exactly. That's very DevOps oriented. Exactly. They kick the tires and then they go, let's move this out. It's all about agility. So is the is the value the management side or or scale or both? It's you know ultimately, if you really distill it down, it's all about simplicity. But it's not simplicity as in lack of functionality. It's simplicity as in the infrastructure is dynamically adapting to stuff rather than the human administrators having to predict where you're going. Yeah, so, so Rex, since the last time we had Tintory on theCUBE, went through some management change, went through a complete rebranding, mm -hmm. now red seems is the, is the new color yep. uh, there. <laughs> um, you know, there's so many companies out there pushing SDS and SDDC and the various things. How, how does Tintory you know, differentiate itself in the marketplace? So we, again, you know, in our world, Ultimately, it's the end users and what they're doing. And, and what we're seeing is at least half of our customer base is moving to at least half of their business being 
um, outsource cloud service provider oriented businesses. May not be all of their applications, but it's some of them. Uh, we very much are approaching both markets. That's, that's exactly where we're going. Whether you call it private cloud, SDDC, uh, software as a service, PAS, IAS, all of those things are kind of the same thing. It's all about VMs and containers and that method of deploying your apps. So there's always a disruption conversation. So I got to ask you who you're disrupting. This, we on theCUBE like to say there's three levels of disruption. There's the disruptors, mm -hmm. like Tintree, Nutanix, you guys are the new school, you know, punching upstream, if you will. The people who are being disrupted fall in two categories. The Series C or D funded companies are trying to go public uh, from you know, many years ago, and then fully the incumbents, the public companies, NetApp, EMC. So who are you guys? You guys are actually in the disruption phase. Who are you? nibbling at the lunch and dinner of? Is it EMC, is it more NetApp? Uh, some say you're taking some share from NetApp. Where are you guys winning? Who are you, who are you, who are you agitating out there in the market you, with your you product? You hit the right companies. I mean, well, honestly, no, it is which the one? big Top companies. rank amount, top three. Uh, I would say top one, two, and three would be NetApp, uh, potentially EMC, maybe Hitachi. It's basically the traditional um, disk storage guys. Um, there's, in addition to the big shift to cloud-based approaches to doing things, Solid state storage and flash is definitely making a big approach and you're having to do that. So when you're having to re-architect a product line versus you know, starting from scratch like we did, um, it can be a challenge. It can be very yeah. difficult to make that, that reasonable. So I, you know, I don't think it's, it's uh, solely Tintree that would say the same thing. But yeah. uh, Nutanix certainly doing well. Yeah, absolutely. So we, you know, to us, just saying you know, we have flash, therefore we're fast is not even interesting, right? That's not an interesting thing. Servers and, and storage in a box is not what we believe is converging. What's converging is the approach to how you deliver your application. This new approach to the modern era, we love talking about the modern enterprise. Rex, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Tintree, hot startup, growing really rapidly. Eating the lunch of the incumbents. <laughs> Uh, soon to be dinner, if you guys keep it up, uh, congratulations. Rex Walters, VP of Technology at Tintree. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>